Maxisville, Midnight Robin here. We have special guest Carrie Adderley, aka the action figure, in the house today. How you doing, Carrie? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I want to get right to it. The House bill passes bill prompted by the doctor's sports scandal. And basically, the sentencing of Larry Nassar sparked new calls from lawmakers to complete action on legislation. The had already received widespread support in both chambers of Congress. The House agreed to take up the Senate version of the bill to speed up its passage. The bill passed in the House today by vote 406 to 3. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about this bill. And basically what this bill is, this legislation requires governing bodies for amateur athletes to put in place Reasonable procedures to limit one-on-one -on -one interaction between minors and adults, except for emergencies. But basically, the main premise of the bill is that if there is a sexual abuse allegation, it is now, by law, you have to report it to authorities. This is something that was not a law before today, and it passed in the House. And, Kerry, okay, what I would like to do is I would like to really... This is this is a win on a great level because if it wasn't for the testimony of the women and the Larry Nassar case, if it wasn't for Dominique Musiano speaking up about the Carolis and the abuse years ago, if it wasn't for Nancy Hoghead, if it wasn't for a lot of these people, women, strong women speaking up about what's going on and the testimony, um, this wouldn't happen. So what are your thoughts on this bill being passed, Kerry? Uh, I think it's great, man. It's great for for just the athletes. Great that, um, you know, people, gym owners, you know, national government bodies, people have to report this stuff and it has to be done and you know, report back in 24 hours. You know, it's like it, it shouldn't have gone without – even question in the first place, but I'm glad that it's happened and now, uh, you know, other things can begin to happen as we kind of move forward and, in, in uh, mending and, and helping the community grow. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, this is, this is, you know, this is one of, this is one of those bills in my opinion that it's a common sense bill, you know, um, if you're a coach or a, or a human being for that matter, and you hear of these allegations happening, the best thing to do is to let the authorities know, let the authorities deal with it. This is what they are. This is what they get paid to do. They're professionals in that field. Even if you may not think it's. You know, you know, even if you don't maybe trust the person that's saying it, still let the authorities investigate the matter. This is what they get paid to do. And this is one of the things that USAG is fighting, is going to fight in civil court. They had no legal duty to warn others. Okay, so now with this rule being passed, that's not a defense anymore. Okay, there's no one's defense anymore. Okay. We have to protect children, women, athletes, and I am just really, really happy this went through, Karen. I'm really, really happy, and I'm sure, you know, all the women and people that were ab abused in the past are happy that this passed. This was the right thing to, to do, and it's great because, you know, when you have so much things going on, you know, in politics, I'm glad the people that we voted to get in Congress and Senate, they actually did the right thing and they passed this. So, job well done, the House and the Senate and our United States government for passing this bill. This is great. 
Um, this is great. This is great. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to talk about. Okay, the board resigned. Carrie, uh, the USOC gave USA Gymnastics a six-day notice, basically that the whole board needed to resign, or else they would decert decertify USA Gymnastics, which is pretty much like the the death penalty for gymnastics. And decertifying means that they were no longer be in control of deciding Olympic teams and national teams. So USA Gymnastics complied. Everyone within the board resigned. Do you think this is enough to right the ship now since USAG complied with the USOC? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm so happy that they all resigned. Um, you know, that was just the next step. And there's several other steps um, that need to happen at, uh, for this uh, and to USA Gymnastics, you know. So they got a lot ahead of them, and yes, they all need to resign. And, you know, there's been a lot of people come out, you know, spoken about this. Uh, I, even, uh, you know, Stephen Lazandra put his resignation up and made a statement. Um, him just being named on the uh, being on the board January first, started January first. So, you know, within a month, he's had to he started and, and resigned. And you know, it's unfortunate for him because maybe he would have been able to a person that could have made uh, some difference. But you know, it, it's just right now they have a lot of other issues, pressing issues that they're going to have to deal with and. Right now, gymnastics shouldn't be one of them. They should be focusing on the organization and, you know, that, that alone. They need to be focusing on themselves and the stuff they have ahead of them, you know? Okay. And, yeah, I definitely want to talk a little bit about that, too, because, you know, Steve Lazandra had to resign from the board as well as Ivana Hung, and those were the two athlete reps that literally just got placed on the board, literally, at the beginning of January. So um, it kind of sucks for Steven Lazandra and Ivana Hung because they just got there and now they got their name in these articles as people that resigned and they're kind of like attached to like the other board members that potentially, you know, didn't do, you know, the best thing while they were the board. I mean, a lot of these board members that resigned, some of them were a part of giving Steve Penny a a million dollars when he resigned. I mean, and it was and not 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 only that, but but not only that, but it was a unanimous decision to give Steve Penny a million dollars. Like we just had in Congress that passed four oh six, you know, not everyone actually wanted that bill, but we're saying that everyone on that USA Gymnastics board unanimously decided to give Steve Penny, a million dollar bonus, severance. basically, severance when he left with all this stuff going on. That's just, that's just unforgivable. <laughs> well, I think they're regretting it now. Um, yeah, I think they're regretting it all now. So now that they're not there, you know, we'll see what the next statement that, uh, you know, the president of USA Gymnastics makes.
you know, what happens? You know, who, that's going to be something that's going to have to come in play, you know, where hopefully John Manley, that lawyer, is talking about that, you know, and those things. Because he, if he brings that up, that's like, hey, that's a lot of registrations and a lot of people that have invested. And now, obviously, all these people are upset and torn. And then there's still a lot of stories that are going to come out. As we know, there are stories that are going to come out that are with people that are still currently working within the sport. So that there should be more people resigning and retiring and moving on because now those other people are going to start talking. And so it's all coming out. Yeah, I mean, not done out. I mean, there's, you know, there's it's not done coming out. Yeah, it's, it's it's not done. And here's the thing. I mean, and I tell everyone this: this is this is just the beginning because there are U.S. senators now calling for an investigation of the USOC and USA Gymnastics. So, I mean, but this brings up another question, Carrie: Should the USOC decertify USA Gymnastics? Do you think, even with the board resigning, in my opinion? In my opinion and why? My why? Okay, this is why. Um, you know, over 120 gymnasts describing sexual abuse by the hands of Larry Nassau. Over 120, and just in the court case. We already know that there's been maybe over 200, maybe 300 cases that have been reported that some cases that never saw the light of day because of the SMG. That were filed. Things taken. Yep. Yeah, that were filed. Um, you know, the New York Times published uh, a Sunday edition this article requested that you join the athletes and support their cries, man. Like, they, they need the athletes need the support, and USAG has this problem going on. You know, they need to decertify them, and then people need to rally and, and come up, uh, and come up with something different, just new options. And options are what people don't understand is that I feel like people are caught up on the national level body where they need to think about themselves locally, how they need to depend on themselves to make sure they throw good events and not depend on a USAG banner because that's what's causing people to turn out the door now. Yeah. Now, gym owners are going to start seeing new, you know, parents and kids that might have had an interest, but no, now those parents are definitely going to not, uh, Encourage a gymnastics because of all this. Yeah, and I and Especially I when they're doing that banner up, they're not going to encourage it. They're going to deter their children from gymnastics. They're going to offer other options. Now that's going to hurt your numbers. And then now, yeah, the numbers of registration that you're going to be paying the USAG. So that just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, and 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 just, and just to, to piggyback off that, Carrie, um, over the last you know few weeks, I've been really and I challenge. Other people within the gymnastics community to do the same thing I'm doing. You know, don't just rely on me and Karen and, and how we're speaking, because I feel that for so long, everyone in the gymnastics community lives inside a bubble. Okay, it's all gymnastics, this and that. And, and right now, with everything going on, a lot of our friends, you know, uh, within the community, I feel are still in a state of shock. Where they're like, we still got to save you. In denial. Gymnastics. In that denial. Is, they're, not, they're, it's also denial. Yes. Denial. Yes, they're, they're in denial. And and this is what I've been doing. I've been I've been reaching out to now since this has all hit mainstream media now. I mean, this is everywhere. This is global. I mean, I see, I see gymnasts from Australia. I see people from around the world that we're friends with on social media sharing a lot of these articles that are coming out with USA Gymnastics. So this is... This is worldwide now everyone knows what's going on. And I've reached out to just regular people, you know. I reached out to a waiter the other day when I was getting something to eat at a restaurant. And I asked this man, I was like, hey, so what do you think, what are, you, what are your thoughts? I asked him, what are your thoughts on everything going on with USA Gymnastics? This is what he says to me. He said, you know what, that's a good question. A good friend of mine, you know, his daughter wanted to do gymnastics. So, you know, he asked me to go with him. So, you know, this waiter went with his friend and his daughter to go check out gyms. They walked into a gym. They saw the USA Gymnastics banner and they walked right out. They didn't even tell the owners. They didn't tell anyone. So 
This should be a message to all the club owners out there. Listen, the mainstream media has picked this up. Their views on USA Gymnastics is USA Gymnastics enabled this man, Larry Nassar, to do what he did. Why would any gym at this point want to be associated with this organization? Okay? I just feel that I'd like the gymnastic community to wake up. This is not salvageable. Right. And, and this is why it's not salvageable. All right, this is the, I found the article that I wanted to uh, talk about, and it's by the New York Times. It's in the New York Times Olympics uh, section. Um, and the headline reads, Who has USA Gymnastics back at this point? Question mark. The USC, the USOC for some reason. Right? Yep. That's, and this article was published by Juliet McCarr uh, on January 19th. Uh, you know, just last week, January 19, 2000, um, 2018. Okay. And here's an excerpt from this article. Um, the United States Olympic Committee won't step in to run the national governing body for team handball because it was plagued by a continued pattern of dysfunction. At another time, it stripped the power of the Taekwondo Federation because it had financial troubles and failed to effectively confront its problem in 2008. Uh, in 2008, it threatened to disband USA Track and Field because the organization needed to just shrink its board of directors. Those problems seem like jaywalking violations compared to the blatant failure of USA Gymnastics to protect its young gymnasts from a serial predator like Dr. Lawrence J. Nassar, the longtime national team doctor. That's the opening extra to this article. Okay. I mean, that that says a lot right there. Look, track and field, Taekwondo, these places it threatened to disband them just to shrink their board of directors. Just to shrink their board of, just take some people off the board of directors or we're gonna disband you. Yeah, and and, and this and, and, yeah, and with USA Gymnastics we're dealing with the for some reason now and for some reason now the USOC has not done anything but write a letter asking them to do these steps. Doesn't that seem a little? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and here's the thing. And here's the thing, too, everyone. I just want everyone to know. Um, I'm actually going to take up for the new president, Carrie Perry. Um, honestly, if I was Carrie Perry, I would resign immediately. Because here's what's happening right now. Everyone in those offices still want to keep their job. And Carrie Perry is a president that doesn't have the experience in the gymnastics community. Okay? She hasn't really been following the history of USA Gymnastics and what's been going on behind the scenes. So right now, okay, I know that there was a coach that I know that was speaking to Carrie Perry over the weekend. And a lot of the issues that are going on, she has, she doesn't know. And then on top of it, you have the people within those offices that want to keep their jobs that are not telling her everything she needs to know to make decisions. So right now, everything that uh, President Perry is doing is reactionary because she doesn't know the information until it's coming out. So I feel bad for her. For, for you know for for Miss Carrie Perry, I actually feel bad for her. And when this goes down, and whenever the USOC does eventually decertify, which I think is going to happen, I don't want her to get the blame for this. She just got on the stage with USA Gymnastics. This is not Carrie Perry's fault. Okay, this has been going on for the last thirty years. She just recently became president a little after Christmas, right? So. I just want to... That's, that's what I said last podcast. That's what I said last podcast. I hope that she, uh, you know, her company can, like, you know, maybe welcome her back. But, you know, she didn't deserve this at all. She had a great job and a great company. She thought she was going to go and, and be a part of something amazing and great. And then, man, they really, uh, they catfished her hard. <laughs> One of the directors catfished her. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I think that's why the board had to resign because, you know, not only did they let Steve Payne get a million dollars when he left, which was, you know, some people think that was hush money. Hey, Steve, just don't say anything. Here's a million dollars. Bye-bye. But they got a president that it's going to be hard for her to make decisions beforehand. It's going to be hard for Miss Carrie Perry to be proactive right now. It's just reactionary. She's going to she's going to she's going to get the news when the media gives it to her. There's no one feeding her inside information right now. There's not that many people yeah, talking well, to her. Yeah, it's really nothing that you would say she should do. So by allowing them to keep running things she meet, that's just allowing them to try to make more money. They're waiting on this money. You know? So the longer they wait to decertify them, the longer they're just going to keep collecting money and collecting money, and it's just going to drag and drag. Because what are they going to use that money for? They're going to have to pay out. They got litigation. They got, they're still trying to pay people salaries that are still working there. There are still people checking in and clocking in. I mean, I was, you know, so I was watching these. This is a, this is another, another excerpt from this article in the New York Times, um, kind, of, kind of talking about the USOC. You know, the Olympic Committee should decertify USA Gymnastics, stripping it of its powers as a national governing body because the Federation has failed its most essential duty to protect young athletes. Decertification is the most drastic thing the Olympic Committee can do. And the nuclear option is warranted. The Gymnastics Federation's failure to safeguard young girls was graver than financial instability or ineptitude on the playing field, which are reasons the Olympic Committee used to decertify other governing bodies. Yeah, man, I just, you know, it's really crazy. And then it said this. It says, it's a rare move. The Olympic Committee has decertified governing bodies only three times in the recent years. But it's necessary. If not now, when more than 150 girls and families have been hurt by a sport that turned its back on them, then when? If the Olympic Committee needs encouragement to make the move, it should just listen to the piercing words of the women who spoke at the Dr. Nassar sentencing hearing last week. About 120 are expected to face Nassau and provide statements during their abuse. You know, and then they go on to talk about, you know, they, they describe uh, Jordan Reber's statement, you know, and, they, and she goes through that. And then they also, and then Scott Blackmon, the executive committee, wasn't available. You know, he wasn't available for this column uh, for them. Uh, but he is since then. I feel like he's come out with a statement since then. Yeah. Yeah. This is... Uh, uh, because of USA, not, this is not his statement, but this is um, this is just more from this article. This next excerpt. This next excerpt. It says, because of USA Gymnastics' decade-long practice of failing to report sexual abuse accusations in the sport to law, enforce, law enforcement, Congress decided there need to be federal law remedy. And that's what we talked about. They're saying in the wake of the case. That uh, fans seen Democratic California, they passed this bill. Um, then they goes on to say the majority of the Gymnastics Federation's officials and board members um, were still on throughout this whole thing. You know, that's what even bothered me too. It's like right when this was happening, it should have all been like, you know, we're out. You know, that that's what bothered me the most. I think about the whole board situation. It's like, hey, you guys don't understand what's happening here, especially when they filed that Senate. I remember that day. You know, and, and Dominique posting about it and being, you know, seeing her there uh, when they were going through that bill, you know, and... You mean Dominique Musiano? Dominique Musiano? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and it now it's passed. So, um, it, it, it's amazing. You know, it's really amazing that uh, gymnastics is at this point right now. It's, it is in crisis. You know, we were talking about this earlier. It's in crisis. You know, there's a coaching crisis. If it's crisis on the coaching and the macro level, you know, because there is, you know, there's a coaching shortage. People don't want to coach gymnastics. And now, definitely, now look, why would people want to even touch gymnastics? No, I do not want to be a gymnastics coach. You know, that's that's what's happening as well. People have to realize in the mindset and the psyche of people and fans, you know, it's completely turning them off to the sport that's so amazing. And now it's going to take even more if, if they, people are trying to mend it and this to even regain the trust. And, and even with sponsorship, it's like, ugh, like it's going to take a long line of proving, 
if you're with USA Gymnastics still, trying to mimic and fix it, man, you're going to be proving yourself for a long time. It's going to be a body of work, like 30 years, to prove like you can't do nothing and, and, and you treat your athletes right. Yeah, you know? yeah. I yeah. mean, my whole thing is this. I mean, there are still cases and there are still women coming forward. And why would any job, uh, club owner or coach want to be dragged through this organization while they're trying to mend these fences and trying to gain the trust of the community? Every article that comes out is damning to the gymnastics economy, especially if you're associated with USA Gymnastics as a club owner, as a coach. But on a different note, there are people within the industry, gymnastics, that are moving forward to start another national governing body. Okay, from our sources, which are very high, there are there are people talking to the USOC president about establishing another national governing body. I mean I think this is right. Dave, it's a former judge, a judge, it's a judge in the end, it's Dave Jessick. Dave Jessick, correct, right. correct. Dave, Jessick. Dave. He, he was he, he stated he made a statement um, before the end of the weekend, and now uh, the beginning of the weekend he made another statement. It's his statement is that he's he's rallying people. You know, he wants to try to still compete. In the end of the statement, he says, "I will now allow us to get." To this summer without a bother, competitive alternative to competing within USAG, USAG starting in October of 2018, with registration available in July. So, um, so he clearly they they want to work within USAG. They want to obviously fight for the sport. They want to clean it up, but they still want to use that banner. You know, unless they they're gonna have to rebrand the logo. They, they gotta. They got to something. But even that still, just the name, when you hear USA Gymnastics, when you Google, like you said, when you Google it, from here on out in the time, that is what's going to pop up. Yeah, I mean, it's just that, you know, the Senate's calling for investigations, so that's going to that's gonna come out. The USOC, they're doing their own investigations. I mean, the news is going to be coming out. I mean, the mainstream media... Are are, 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 are are at this. They are attacking this. Now they are doing their journalism duties and they are reporting on everything. There are so many articles right now out on the net. It's, it's not going to stop anytime soon. So listen, my advice is USOC, decertify USA Gymnastics. My advice to the gymnastics community, take those banners out of your gym, get in touch with Dave Jessick, and find a way to help him start another governing body. We need this as soon as possible to save our sport and to move forward. And the crazy thing about it is that all the conversations we have, Carrie, with our with our friends in the industry, they're always like, we need a solution. Well, we're giving you a solution. Stop paying USA Gymnastics your money and focus your attention on another national governing body. That is the exactly. solution. And that's what all these people keep saying and, and blathering on social, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, that's exactly what has to happen. Okay, human you beings, know, we don't we don't like change. Stop. People are going to hurt the athletes, you know, Jonathan Horton and, and, and the couple of people. You know, we're going to talk, you know, I actually messaged with Jonathan. And we are going to, you know, hopefully you're going to meet up here sometime in, in, in uh, Oklahoma City, maybe at a gym meet. You know, there's a big gym meet coming up this weekend, so maybe he'll be in town for that, and I'll get to see him, you know, and we can talk then. Um, but, yeah, and that's the thing. I'll be out there. I'm out there, and I'll go to these meets, especially last year. You know, y'all can come see me, you know. You can come see me and ask me a question about it, and I'll let you know how I feel um, about this whole situation. Um, but they have to, like you said, we have to decertify them and they have to move on. And they've just been offering, he's offering solutions, but this should not be under USA Tuesday. Just call it something else. 
It's to not that brand is just tarnished forever. For, it should be disbanded and, and disintegrated. So then, when this new organization forms, that organization can be formed in the name of all this stuff that's happened and and, and making it better. Now we're going to flourish. Our sport can now begin to flourish and take off in the direction that it should have been thirty years ago. So you're telling me, Carrie, if 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 Carrie Perry calls you tomorrow, and she asks yep. you to be on the USA Gymnastics board, what would you say? I would say no. No thanks. I would not want to be on that board of directors for USA Gymnastics. And I also say, you can, if, if I'm going to be on any board, it cannot be called USA Gymnastics. That is the association with Larry Nassar. And I don't want that association with me. Period. No man does, especially no man in the sport. I mean, now, I mean, you got Sports Illustrated Olympics, the Sports Illustrated Olympics Twitter blasting the whole USAG as a ring of pedophiles. Come on, man. Come on, man. And this, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what that brand that's what, that's represents what right now. Public, that's what the general public is looking at us like. Like, they don't follow gymnastics, but we won't. Now that they do, they think it's a ring of pedophiles. Come yep. on. This is, sport. this is NBC. Sports Illustrated Olympics. Well, maybe they're not NBC, but they're Sports Illustrated. That's one of the biggest pub- publications. You know? One of the biggest publications in the world. Sports Illustrated, everybody knows. They're everywhere, at least especially in the United States. I'm sure they're everywhere else. And that's what they had to say. That's what a representative theirs had to say. How many of of them are thinking that and saying that? That's why I don't want to be associated with USA Gymnastics. That's why. That's not me. That's not me. And that's not a lot of other guys and men in the sport. You know? And that's why the name, it just can't be in it. You just can't call it that. Whatever you're doing. I know there's still a lot of good people in the sport. I understand that. But you can't call it that. You can Please tell me you can be more creative than that. <laughs> and that's the problem with the sport, too. Not enough creativity. Well, you know, I don't. You can't do the same competition. Well, well you what? And, you know, we were just talking about this, you know. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is that I just want the gymnastics community to know that the good people out there, and there's still a lot of great coaches, administrators, club owners out there. But I want you guys and girls to believe in yourself. You can start another national governing body. Obviously, USA Gymnastics started, okay? And you'd be surprised what... Believe in yourself, gymnastics community. It's like, they don't even believe in themselves. Yeah, like, I'm, just, yeah I'm just trying to get them to believe in themselves. And you're like, oh, well, if there's no USAG, well, the, the sport is going to die. Nah, the sport was around before. For USA Gymnastics, it was around before AAU. It's been around for a very for centuries, okay. And so I just want everyone. Athens, Greece, come on, man, it's been around. Gymnastics has been around. It's not going nowhere, okay. But if you want to save it, you gotta jump ship and build another ship, okay. Build yeah. another boat, okay. <laughs> house is burning. Remember what I'm saying? That? The roof is on fire. It's on fire. It's on fire. See, right so now, and right now it's on. It's, you it's, house is burning. Yeah, you get out. That's like a, that's like a, that's like a, you know, the analogy, you know, every captain, they go down with the ship, right? And if they jump ship, you know, it's like bad. It looks frowned upon. And the captain goes down with the ship. But what they did was the ship was going down, they, con- they convinced another captain to get on. <laughs> I know they got yeah, Carrie Perry down. to come on. It's like, dang! Yeah, they can bring the other captain to get on the ship, and now the ship's burning, and then the other captain's going down with the ship. How crazy is that? Nah, man. Listen, there's a lot of life preservers out there. There's a lot of boats. Get that life preserver. Take it. We got a lot of them. Get off the ship, yeah. float away, it's and like build another Titanic one. Hitting the ice it's like the Titanic hitting the ice glacier. You know, people they held on, and that, then the ship went down. <laughs> shit went down. It'd be like it took forever for that ship to go down. Yeah, man. It, you know, they, 
So, so that's what they should do, man. They should get out of there. Get out of the house. Get out of there. And and start, you know, build, start from scratch. You know? And it's not even start from scratch. It's like every, a lot of things are in place. You just got to make sure you weed out the people that are doing the bad. You know, that's what the investigation needs to do. That needs to be done first. Like, people are trying to keep operating without these investigations being complete. No, they need to be completely and fully investigated. They shut down things. FBI and things like that, especially with the government, they will come in and shut it down. Do you want that? Do we want the FBI to come in and shut them down? No. That would look even worse than what already is. It's already the worst thing in American sports history scandal. And if the FBI comes in and investigates, that's going to be even worse blemish. Come on. Yeah, so, you know, so, you know, right now, me personally, I'm in full support of anyone that wants to start a national governing body. Yes, it's a lot of hard work, but this is a great sport and it's worth it. And if anyone wants to come on to the show to talk about it, really talk about, you know, starting a national governing body and use the Massaville as a platform to get more volunteers and to get more educated uh, professional people involved, let us know um, because we're about healing the sport right now because it is fractured and then growing the sport again. So um, I think we can do it, but people need to realize that this is really happening. We are in a gymnastics crisis. Wake up. You got to start making moves, okay? There shouldn't be a day that goes by like you walk into the gym thinking about, okay, what are we doing to move forward? Not... You know, uh, state championships is coming up, and regionals is coming up, and jails is coming up, okay? There's no Olympic year. And let me explain something. 99% of the gymnasts doing gymnastics are not going to make an Olympic team, okay? Let's just be real. You're not going to make it. 99% of the people aren't training for the Olympics right now, okay? The Olympics ain't for another two years, so everyone needs to slow down and really think about ways to move forward past USA Gymnastics. Yep. And we're going to end on that note, Gymnasticsville. Carrie Adderley, thanks for coming in. Yeah, man, anytime. You know, looking forward to it next week. Let's, I want everybody to look out for the... Uh, our teacher was back golf classic come in Oklahoma City, May 4th, too. You know, uh, getting some support, you know, so we get a lot of good local uh, here in Oklahoma and Oklahoma City, Norman, more uh, Edmond area support of uh, this golf tournament uh, and to raise money for uh, college gymnastics club men and women. You know, we're going to pick a, a special club and actually – We'd like to hear from college clubs of, um, you know, why they would uh, deserve this uh, sponsorship or reward that we're going to provide, you know, with, the, uh, with uh, parts of the proceeds from this golf tournament. So we want people to come down for golf. Then we also want to hold a town hall meeting, you know, so let's get everybody together to talk about this stuff. And when is the you golf know? tournament, Kerry? When is the golf tournament? Again, the golf tournament is May 14th. It is uh, on a Monday morning. And it's great because it's after uh, a, a event uh, that's being held that same weekend. And we know a lot of NCAA college coaches will be there. We know a lot of USA Gymnastics Club members will probably be there if, if they choose to go there. And, the, and parents. And, and, and club owners and et cetera. And we want them to come to this and we want them to ask questions and we want them to tell us their stories. And so we can make sure that we're helping and, and making this whole thing more transparent so people can feel a bigger, a better community sit. That's what we're doing this for. That's what we're about at our AGA and in, in the community. And we, we work in silence. We just do what we have to do. You know, a lot of people criticize us for some of the things we say, but they can't criticize us for our work. Because we put the work in and we do it. So, you know, that's, that's what's so more important, you know, and for people to have a place to feel like they have a voice. 
So come out and uh, you know help us raise money. You know we have foursomes, you know, and uh, foursome packages, and then also other type of uh, sponsorship packages for gym clubs or companies that may be interested. Um, right now we have some pretty good solid leads um, and support for this locally already. And now you know obviously with people coming in for a national event, it'd be great to get some people like that too. So they can see the support that's here in Oklahoma, where the men's and women's NCAA program is the strongest right now. They're the best in the country. So it, it, to me, it all makes sense. You know, come here and let's, you know, in the celebration of gymnastics, let's talk about these issues and let's, let's, let's really organize and use a fundraiser to help gymnastics, you know, to help give back to the people that need it. Yeah, that's great. And what really interests me about this event, Carrie, is that, um, first of all, you can find more information on gymnasticsvillage.com. We have a few banners up on the, on, 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 on the website, gymnasticsvillage.com. But what I'm really, really uh, excited about, and we'll have more information, you know, as the, the months we get closer, but the town hall, okay? The town hall is important. And we're going to open up the town hall to parents. We're going to open up the town hall to prominent coaches and we're going to do something that is going to have people come and talk and discuss these issues that have not been talked about over the last 30 years because of fear of the sport. So we want parents to come because right now you and I, we don't have all the answers, but how we can get the answers in find solutions to conquer some of the problems we have and issues we have in the sport is by gathering people together to communicate without fear of not making a national team, without fear of USA Gymnastics punishing you for speaking the truth. That's what this is about. Yep. Communication. I think Raz Bazar... Olympian, you're, you know, your former teammate, right? He wrote something on social media the other day, and I don't have it in front of me, but I just know that the basic premise of it was communication and talking and dialogue, okay? We need to have the dialogue. It's therapeutic, but it's also going to help find solutions to the problems we have. In this town hall that we're going to have in conjunction with the Triple Back Golf Classic, Put on by the American Gymnastics Alliance, a nonprofit 501c corporation, which is really there to bridge the gap and help the gymnast community move forward. Absolutely. You know, I'm literally looking forward to this event. Um, you know, just on Gymnasticsville alone, I've seen we're getting a lot of local restaurants following us and listening to gymnastics. You know, we're, we're helping create a great buzz, and it needs to be a pillar. And I honestly think that Oklahoma City and the state of Oklahoma can be a pillar of, of gymnastics and a standard, uh, a new high standard. Uh, so um, it's great that even in that, what they just had post that he had mentioned Paul Zert to offer help in PR and publications and, and, and marketing. And that's great that these people are, are coming forward and wanting to help and do a, a big part in, in making gymnastics, making gymnastics great again. <laughs> so no, no, so. and, and you're right. And I just want to piggyback off that because I just want the gymnastics community, like we said again, this is this is going to be the last word. Is just believe in yourself, gymnastics community. You know, we are a great sport, and there's a lot of great individuals, and usually. When things are in crisis, that really brings people together to problem solve. So I feel that because of this crisis, let's let's turn this negative into a positive. Let's rebuild a new organization. All the good people, let's get together and build something great. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, it's the Triple Bat Golf Classic. May 14th, shotgun start at 8 a.m. And, you know, I think registration will be open uh, at about 7 a.m. or 7.30. Uh, there'll be, you know, refreshments and breakfast uh, style before.
before the tournament, and then we'll get into it. And then at the end, we'll host our uh, you know awards presentation and and recognition recognition of our sponsors, and then we'll uh, lead into the town hall. And obviously, the bigger this grows, uh, maybe we can host a second day to have a second day conference of this town hall. Um, and if we get more support and people calling in or comment and letting us know that they'll be in town and therefore coming to something like this, then uh, we can, you know, figure out a place to, to expand it, you know, hold a conference room. And they have conference areas at the golf uh, place or, you know, figure out a place to do it downtown somewhere um, since everybody will be staying in that area uh, with, uh, with the competition being in the downtown Oklahoma City area. So, again, Triple Bat Golf Classic, May 14th, 8 a.m. Shotgun start. Uh, it's going to be a great. It's going to be a great event. It's going to be fun, and we're going to show people how how the AGA throws their events. You know, the AGA president is Jolene Worley, and she is uh, awesome. You know, people who know Jolene, you know, she is a wonderful person. And we're just glad that she's the part of our organization and the president of our organization. Yep. And that's a wrap. Carrie, thanks again. I'm Midnight Robin. And we'll see you next time on Gymnasticsville, the voice of acrobatics.